Water is the life force that all living things need to survive. Yet we take it for granted that it is always available and will always be there. Surprisingly, 99% of the world's water supply is unavailable for consumption because it is tied up in our oceans, glaciers, and icebergs. And of the remaining 1% that is in our rivers, lakes, atmosphere, and groundwater, almost all of it is contaminated with waterborne diseases, bacteria, and viruses that requires treatment for safe use by humans. In my first trip to uh, a developing country, it was amazing. Of all the challenges I anticipated that I might face, one of the hardest things that I hadn't considered was uh, the difficulty of, of having clean water to drink. Because a lot of the Africans uh, where we were had opportunity to have access to water. Um, it wasn't usually very easy. Sometimes they had to walk miles with dirty buckets and bring the water back. Some of them were fortunate enough to be in situations where they may have had wells that were dug by relief institutions or maybe occasionally even by their government. But even that water had so much bacteria in it, and children and um, other folks were still dying as a result of drinking that water. And that was just amazing to see that even the water, even those that could have access to water, didn't have water that they could trust and that was healthy. And in that situation, um, the people are so dehydrated and so thirsty and you choose between either drinking water that may kill you or drinking no water. And so you gamble. You say, you know, I, I, at least I have a chance if I drink bad water that I, that I might make it or I might live another day. So you don't have a choice. You have to drink the water. And that's just a tragic situation to be caught in between. Uh, drinking water that may kill you or, or, or dying of dehydration. And it's a no-win situation. And it's something that in the United States I've taken so for granted. I can reach the faucet any time and have a cup of clean water. And to think that, um, uh, there's so many people that are literally dying from, from dehydration and from the lack of healthy, clean water. And we've got uh, you know, such an abundance here, it's, it's hard to fathom um, the difference. It's just such a, a stark contrast. As a kid, we were uh, missionaries in Costa Rica and Ecuador, and we were told that people got used to their water and that if we were in the country for many years that eventually we'd get used to it. And, but in the interim, we had to boil our water and filter it. But as time went on, we saw that uh, this uh, so-called immunity was not necessarily the way things were. The reality is that if they do not have truly safe, sterile water to drink, sooner or later, something like cholera, typhoid, um, guinea worm, or hepatitis will come along and will have devastating effects upon their life. There's over 1.1 to 1.2 billion people in the world that lack access to safe drinking water. The McGuire Water Purifier developed over a number of years uh, starting in about 1992 where I started exploring uh, looking at using electrolysis of salt as a means of uh, inexpensively getting uh, chlorine disinfectant to kill the bacteria. When we take a water purifier to um, a village or a community, the very first thing we do is try and educate those around us. We pick out several people um, who are nationals that are going to be in charge of running the purifier or maintaining the purifier. We teach them how to use it. Then they demonstrate it to the community. We set it up, we set up um, all of these uh, barrels. They line them up all in a row and they wait for that water to be chlorinated. They wait for that safe drinking water to take home to their families. Most of the water in Zambia, if not all of the water in Zambia, is contaminated. Uh, Zambia is a landlocked country and they had some deep boreholes and deep wells and all pit latrines. And they have six months of rainy season, six months of dry season. Obviously the wells and the boreholes are drilled during the dry season as are the latrines, the pit latrines. So when the rainy season comes, the water table comes up and contaminates the boreholes and the wells from the pit latrines. Some of the water there comes from rivers or uh, the lakes, again contaminated by animals. Um, I've seen 
Women scoop out a little pit in the sand of a dry riverbed and wait for the water to fill that pit. And they wash their dishes in it and they carry it back. That is their drinking water. They are very, very receptive to any, any type of change that's going to keep them from getting sick. Uh, they see death on a daily basis, death from waterborne diseases. Uh, they know that and they know the only way that they can combat that is through safe drinking water. So they line up when the word gets out that there's a water purifier and there's safe drinking water. Women, children, men line up long lines just to, just to have a chance to get uh, enough of that drinking water. That one single purifier can go from serving a small community, two or three hundred people, up to several thousand people by just expanding it, that same purifier. Safe drinking water is, is a luxury in most places. Um, and that's what I think the vision of New Life International is, is, is uh, providing safe drinking water to a thirsty world that deserves it. I mean, you think the vision sounds so big, to give uh, clean water to the world, clean water for a thirsty world. It seems like such a difficult, such a huge problem, but really it's not. If you would like to become part of New Life International and help sponsor a McGuire water purifier somewhere in the world, please call us here at New Life International, 812-752-7474. Or visit us on the World Wide Web at www.waterfortheworld.com.